Check it out guys, the structure to our fruiting rooms is almost complete. Now it's been a real hard few weeks here. I've been um, sort of struggling to get stuff done uh, while trying to build here, trying to run the other farm, trying to still do deliveries, farmers markets on the weekend, um, all that sort of carry on. But I'm really happy because it's a big, it's a big milestone for me and um, what I had to do here. And it really looks like the place is taking shape. We go back a bit. You can see down there, there's the two fruiting rooms side by side. Um, they're not actually joined to the garage structure at all. There's the uh, ventilation coming in on the top there, which still needs to be connected. But we'll go and we'll have a look in. Uh, I, there's no lights in here yet. There's still a few bits missing. But if we go in, I hope that, that will adjust. Yeah, here we are. We can walk right in here, right down. So they're quite deep, these fruiting rooms. They go back about seven metres. There's a door back there. There's still a few things to do, like there's no um, alimony extrude down the inside uh, walls there. Uh, both rooms are identical in size, 7.2 metres by 2.6 metres. Here's number two. Um, so they're looking good. Still need to do with the riveting. Drains on the floor, drains, eh? But if we go on the outside, you can actually walk right the way around here. So we can actually come down here. I'll go this way so you can see where I'm going. To Blim and Narnia down here, Narnia. But we'll go down and you can see how close they got to the frame there. Um, so when I designed this, I sort of wanted a specific height. Here we go, down here there's the, um, uh, what do you call it? Ventilation coming in, so the big ventilation coming out here as well. And they're out and they'll go straight up and out the roof um, through our heat exchangers to recover the heat. Come right down here and down this end we can't actually get through because I've got all my shelving stored down here, which I've had delivered. Um, so you can see I, I designed the, uh, how high I wanted it, and then I pushed it out as far as I thought I could go while just squeezing past these structural rafters here. So there's about a three finger gap in there. So I think I've um, measured it fairly well. I'm pretty happy with it, but they are looking great. Um, yeah, though, can't remember the total square metre off the top of my head. Maybe 40 squares in there, 20 squares each room. Um, so, that is good. Now, I've had a few questions asked, why have I done two fruiting rooms? Um, two main reasons. One, cleaning. Um, if you've got a, a fruiting room that needs to clean, and they always need to clean, uh, and it's full of mushrooms, it's really hard to do it. I always take all the mushroom bags out because when I clean it, you don't want any splashes or anything getting near mushrooms. It's got to be real hygienic. So I'd, be, I'd, I'd always take all the mushrooms out, clean and put them all back in and I don't want to do that again. So the first reason for two fruiting rooms is that. The second reason is more of an in-depth one and we'll go to my whiteboard. I've done a wee drawing and we'll try to explain to you why. Right, so I really hope you can actually see this quite well. This is my representation of a problem I'm trying to solve by having two fruiting rooms. Now if we quickly glance up at this board, I'll just point out what things are. We're starting on day one through to day 25. It starts on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and so on and so forth, all the way down the line. Now I grow generally exclusively Italian oyster. Why? Because uh, I can produce it regularly, the people at the markets love it, and I can sell it to chefs and they'll love it too. Also we don't have a big selection of mushrooms we can grow in New Zealand. We can't import some of the major species uh, like lion's mane, things like that. So we have a really limited selection, but that's what I generally grow a lot of. Now I put it into my fruiting room at this time of year on day one or a Thursday up here. Now what I want to do is put the bags in the fruiting room and crank that humidity up, get it really high, right? Like 95 is pretty good. And run that on high humidity for a number of days. And so you can see the squiggly sort of sine wave going here, that's a period of high humidity. Then once we get a good pin set come through and they start forming the caps, we buff in the humidity back and it grows through to this uh, rectangle here which is the cropping cycle. So I'll go, up, I'll go in on Thursday and I'll start at this time of year and I'll start cropping from Wednesday through to Saturday but it's usually over about two days in the year, it might be Wednesday, Thursday or Thursday, Friday, um, the weather at the time does depend. A bit warmer, it speeds it up, but colder, it slows it down. Then after we crop, as we stand down period, during that period we like to get the humidity back up high again or else the blocks tend to dry out. So you can see I've got another squiggly line here of where I want to increase 
my humidity in the fruiting room again. And then after we we squiggly line, the mushrooms, this will be the second flush coming in, the mushrooms will form and will second flush crop here. And after that second flush crop is done, that goes out. What we are doing is we are putting bags in our fruiting room every day on Thursday. So Thursday, 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 Thursday. Now the one problem I get, what I'm trying to solve, is that when this second block, when the second batch of mushrooms go on the following Thursday, they want to have the period of high humidity here during the same period that we are trying to uh, harvest the crop here. Okay? So high humidity here, harvesting crop here, and they overlap. And when you are cutting mushrooms and the humidity is really high, I believe you get a decrease in mushroom cap quality. To harvest mushroom, high quality mushroom caps, you want to back that humidity off before you, you cut them. That's what I have found. I'm not saying that's correct, but that's how I do it and that's what I've found. And so we've got this problem of high humidity overlapping our harvest time. And I keep getting this reoccurring problem. So the next week, the same thing. Down here, we can see when we want the humidity higher for the second flush, it's overlapping a, a, a second flush cropping window again. Right? So this is frustrating because the, the period I want the humidity high I, is the period I should have the humidity a bit lower. Um, so to solve this problem, we want to basically crop in each individual fruiting room differently. So the blue will be one crop and the green and one fruiting room. It's called the blue fruiting room one and the green will be fruiting room two. And if we do that, we eliminate this period of overlap of high humidity. We eliminate that one, we eliminate that one, we eliminate that one, we eliminate that one, okay? And the only near crossover we'll have will be the blue, let's say, where it'll be high humidity here, and then this one, and so I'll just maintain its high humidity. And the humidity will be higher during the, the, the cap sort of development, but it won't be high during the cropping cycle. So that's the major re I hope you can understand that, but that's the bad and cleaning of the primary drivers behind two fruiting rooms. Now, I don't know what, if what I'm doing here is, is going to be effective, but you know, it's all about experimentation. I've taught myself everything I know about mushrooms, generally from YouTube, from the other YouTubes, you know, like Eric Myers, um, Andrew from Mossy Creek, um, Gary from Fresh From The Farm, like, I watch other YouTubers to learn how to grow mushrooms, and I think a lot of other people do as well. Um, so I'm just sharing with what I'm thinking is going to work for me. So I hope you guys could sort of understand that and understand my reasoning behind having fruiting rooms side by side here. Um, over the next week, we're going to get the ventilation there plumped down into them. They'll go straight into the top, and the exhaust will go straight out the back. Sorry I haven't been able to put too much effort into these YouTube videos. I simply can't find the time to do everything. I do most of this on my own to keep costs down. This whole farm build, we're aiming to do it under 100,000 New Zealand dollars, which is about 70,000 US dollars. So that's my budget. Um, that's the money I set aside for this. So to really get under that, I have to do everything myself. I can't pay for labour because labour in New Zealand is not cheap. Uh, but you can see... The goal was to just wheel the racks out of here, wheel them down and over to the packing area right there where we harvest straight off the racks, put it into bags. The bags we move to a fridge, which big fridge which might be put right here with the broken autoclavers, and then the racks get wheeled straight back into the fruiting room. So yeah, a lot more still to do.